The following is brought to you by PaulAkers.net. Hi everyone, Paul Akers. It's Saturday morning. Last Saturday I landed in Japan and I was on my sixth study mission in Japan. This time I was with Norman Bodak again, the father of Lean in the U.S., who brought Lean and Lean Thinking to the U.S. to businesses with his company, Productivity. And he published over 100 books, and I was invited a second time to go with him to Japan, and just, we had the most incredible trip. So I want to do a quick recap, because in a half hour, I got to catch a plane out of here. And I wanted to tell you everything I learned. I'm going to do it very, very quickly. You know, six times now I've been to Japan. The first time I came here, I found out how clueless I was. I was very, very successful making a lot of money, everything going really well, and I saw the Toyota production system in living color and I realized I'm on another planet. So that was my first takeaway the first time. The second time I came here, I began to realize, this about five years later, that really all Toyota was doing was identifying waste in every process and eliminating it. And I went home from there and that's when Two Second Lean really started to take off and I really started to understand the power of lean and really how simple it was. And then I came back a couple years later and then I had the fortune of uh, meeting with the vice president of Lexus and I asked him what the most important thing was and he told me teaching and training people and building a culture of continuous improvement. And that's really when I began to take Lean to the next level because I focused so much on our morning meeting, the three Sing every day and building that kata, that routine of teaching and training our people. And that was the third time I came to Japan. And then the fourth time I came to Japan, I met with a, a president of one of the company's suppliers to Lexus, who's making the mirrors. And he told me, you know, we're measuring a sixth of a second. And I asked him, wow, aren't you stressed out? And he said, we don't have time to be stressed out because if we don't operate at this level of excellence, we won't survive because China is two days away from us and they're two weeks away from you. And that really solidified that trip is that, man, the Japanese are measuring tenth of a second they're that tuned in to waste and how sloppy we really are and then I came back last year with Norman Bodak and he asked this powerful question he said what is Japan really all about and no one could answer the question and the answer was quality Japan is all about quality when you think about the best companies in the world whether it be Toyota Honda Canon Nikon Kubota Panasonic Sony it's just quality Everything the Japanese do is at the highest level of quality. They're basically the best manufacturers in the world. It's undisputed. They operate with high, high tolerances and they're continuously improving everything. And you know, they learned a lot of this from Demi from the US, but the bottom line is they did it and we didn't do it. So that was the fifth time. Now, this time, I wanna tell you what my one takeaway was because it was so powerful the joy of Kaizen. We met with one man who was a young president of a company, a third generation, I believe, making insulators for the power company here in Japan, a great sense of humor. And they just recently learned lean as a result of Toyota coming into the community and teaching it to him. Now, Toyota had no vested interest whatsoever in teaching this company because they were not a supplier to Toyota, but this is the kind of company Toyota is. Maybe people always ask me, Paul, why are you so excited? Why are you so jacked up? Because, you know, I'm experiencing lean at a level that most people don't get don't get to experience and you know my connection with Toyota and what they've taught me on all the tours that I've been here has just really made me understand and appreciate what they're doing they're doing something great for the world and they went into this company and taught this company lean and we just had the greatest time touring their facility seeing their people make all the insulators and do all the cool things but this, but this president was special because he said something in his presentation to us before we toured the shop floor he said you know we do lean because the joy of Kaizen. And I said, well, what do you mean the joy of Kaizen? What does that mean? He says, there's so much joy for a human being to learn and improve. And I thought, you get it. This is why I'm so jacked up about lean because it gives me joy and it gives all the people I know who are doing it correctly joy. They're not counting numbers. They're not doing spreadsheets and graphs. They have the joy of knowing what it feels like for a human being to improve and learn on a daily basis. That's really the essence of lean. So I entitled my sixth trip to Japan, The Joy of Kaizen, because it is such a powerful message from a young, lean man who is learning lean for the first time from Toyota and is doing a fantastic job. So that's kind of my main takeaway. There are so many things I learned. When Noriko Norman's wife, we asked him what was Tai Chi Ono like, he said he was very demanding and he was you know always wanting something to be better but she said something that was so powerful she said ono would say what a waste of life 
for people to do non-value added activity. You know, there's value added activity every day and there's not a value. And Ono said, what a waste of a life to do non-value added activity. And people say, why are you all hung up in this business principle? Because it's wasting a life. It's wasting a life if you don't understand how to see waste and the difference between value and non-value. And then another great story that uh, was told from Richie Shingo about his father, that there are three kinds of engineers. There's the white glove engineer that basically sits in his office all the time. And then there's the catalog engineer that opens up the catalog to solve every problem. And then there's the no engineer, and yet is the Russian word for no, it can't be done engineer. And he said, you know, there, if an engineer is not washing his hands or her hands five times a day, they're worthless. And basically that means is if you're not on the shop floor getting your hands dirty, you have no clue what's going on. And we saw that over and over again with the Toyota suppliers, first tier, second tier, as well as when we visited Lexus, that these managers and leaders were on the shop floor and we were blown away by their commitment to continuous improvement. Originally I named the trip the Relentless Lean Study Mission because we just saw these companies relentlessly improving. They were already excellent and they were still improving. But I changed the name of the trip to the Joy of Kaizen because this man at the end was just so incredible because you saw the spark in his life. One of the other things is I asked Noriko, Norman's wife, what was Shingo like? I mean, they, Norman and, and Noriko worked with Shigeo Shingo and Taichi Ono and he said he was meticulous. He was extremely demanding, but he was always willing to help. And that is just powerful. And then Richie Oshingo gave us a great talk about his father and just about his concept as a leader of Toyota China and five startups with uh, Toyota and knowing the president and reporting directly to the president of Toyota. He taught us so many great things. One is that the Toyota production system is about total participation. It is not a suggestion system, it's total participation. That means everyone in the company involved. And then the next thing he told us that it's not enough to go and see, you have to go and watch. You have to sit down and watch and understand the problems so that when you have deep and profound knowledge, then you can make the right assessment. And then also you must have great standards so you have something to measure against. I mean, the wisdom that this trip was full of was just, it was so profound, my head is spinning. People say, why, why do you go to Japan so much? You know, haven't you figured this all out? Are you kidding? I am clueless. And the best thing is I brought three of my people with me and when people tour fast, I always tell them on a scale of 1 to 100 that Fast Cap is a 3 and Toyota is a 99. We're, we're absolutely clueless. We have no idea what we're doing. We're wandering the wilderness. And people would say, oh, this is the most incredible facility I've ever seen. Your people are incredible. They're so engaged and everything. And they would argue with me and say, you're really like a 60 or a 70. I go, no, I'm a 3. And my people came this time and they saw Lexus and the suppliers of Lexus say, 3? I think you're being generous. We're maybe like a 1 or a negative 10. That's the level that we saw here. It was breathtaking. And I think the best thing about Japan is you get a recalibration and what the truth really is about how you're performing. And we are performing so low and you'd think I'd be so discouraged by that, but I'm not. I'm encouraged because now I have the opportunity to improve. I have a much higher vision. Another great question when we went to the dojo, uh, which is a place where we actually did simulations on putting together radiators and we work with uh, people from Lexus and Land Cruiser and from Toyota who'd worked for them for 40 years. These are top level managers. And we asked him what, what Ono would do. And he said, Ono always said that if you have five opportunities to improve, right? You have five Kaizans you can do. Always do the easiest one first so you can do it right away and change your viewpoint. So you can climb the mountain and get a better view of where you need to be. Don't focus on the harder one, focus on the easy one. And then they said, if you're gonna climb a mountain, climb a small mountain first. Don't climb Mount Everest first, climb Mount Fuji and then try to climb Mount Everest. I mean, Ono was so smart and here we have access to people that work with Ono. Here we are with Richie Oshingo, the son of Shigeo Oshingo. I mean, it was incredible. We're with the president of Georgetown, Kentucky. We're with the president of Lexus, touring the Lexus plant on the floor. This was the craziest trip you could ever imagine. Norman, you did a phenomenal job. Mommy, who was also part of organizing the whole thing, you did a phenomenal job. Simultaneous translator. We had so many great things going on this trip. It was just crazy. It was from start to finish. But perhaps one of the best things we had going on this trip was Mr. Amazawa, who is the former president of Toyota Georgetown, who turned the Georgetown plant around, and former president of Lexus in Kishu, Japan. 
We had him for three days with us on the bus. Unlimited access, asking him questions all the time, walking on the shop floor at, in Lexus, seeing the spray room with the, with the uh, replaceable cartridge system. We saw things that people would never see. It was crazy what this guy exposed us to, and he was completely candid and honest. And I love this guy so much. He was just fantastic. And one of the best things about him was he said, Toyota has problems. Toyota's not perfect. You know, and you, you hold Toyota up as being this amazing company, and it is the most amazing company in the world, frankly, right? But they're still not perfect. They still have struggles. And that's encouraging, too, because all of us have problems and struggles with our organizations and companies, but we just keep pressing on. And as good as Toyota and Lexus are, they just keep pressing on their relentless. We walked their training center with Mr. Amazawa. It was just crazy what we were exposed to. So, and I hope that you got some things out of what we talked about. Uh, some people followed us on the chat. I know a lot of videos have been posted, but at the end of the day, it was a phenomenal trip. And Norman, I can't thank you enough for your friendship and your mentorship. And he's my father, basically. My dad passed away about five years ago, and Norman is my new adopted father, and he's just fantastic. And Noriko, his wife, is unbelievable and I had the trip of a lifetime and I can't thank all the people that came on the trip my friends from around the world whether it be Philippe from Portugal or Ashley from the UK or David Long from North Carolina I had friends Greg Glebe came Glenn Bostek came I had people from everywhere Brad came from Canada and if I didn't name your name don't get mad at me I mean just people from everywhere we had John and his team from Cambridge come just amazing amazing people so not only were the things we saw fantastic but the people we connected with the friendships that were made were irreplaceable. So hopefully this all helps you and encourages you to press on, press on to excellence, never give up, never tolerate low level performance. We can be so much better than we are, whether it be taking care of our health, as I talk about lean health, or building a phenomenal organization, as I talk about two second lean. It's all incredibly relevant, and we all are on a journey that will never end. Thanks a lot, coming to you from Fukuoka, Japan, on the last day, Paul Akers, thank you.